Hello you beautiful bunch of bitches and welcome back. So you know today's video is already demonetized so I might as well call you a beautiful bunch of bitches for today. Any engagement would be highly appreciated because you know me, YouTube and sex. We're currently in this like constant battle to try and win and YouTube is constantly winning. The algorithm is winning so would really appreciate but yeah today I thought we would sit down and film episode four of revealing your sex secrets so I will link the other three down below but I genuinely love these videos like I'm so excited this little setup makes me feel like I'm on FaceTime to a friend and that is the vibe we are going for with this series so let's just dive right on in because I think we're all here for a little giggle and to forget our worries for a little while okay since we're going to be talking about some dick today i thought this top was pretty fitting okay right let's dive right on in so had a tinder hookup who called me mummy and had me tie him up no discussion first things first i want to know how there was no discussion about tying him up like how is that even possible did he just like get the rope out keep his mouth shut hand you the rope just look at you and you were like okay i guess this is what i'm gonna do then and second of all i i genuinely don't even know how i'd feel about my boyfriend calling me mummy let alone a random stranger from tinder i feel like my mother like a picture of my mother would genuinely just pop into my head and i would instantly dry up and my vagina would just be like get the fuck out daddy on the other hand oh, i don't know i just feel like daddy and mummy aren't on the same level i don't know if daddy's be if it's because daddy's been floating around for a while like when daddy first came on the scene i was like absolutely not whereas now i get it like i get how it can be really hot because it's kind of like that authoritative figure like i think that's why people get so into it because it's like oh daddy like you know fucking discipline me like tell me off but then at the same time you're getting that image of your dad in your head i don't know i've been sleeping with this guy for a month leading him on and i don't even like him but a girl gotta get some okay right we know how we feel about leading people on in this channel we're not a fan of it i don't condone it i don't recommend it i don't stand behind it but on the other hand this is what they these men are doing to us all the time so is it really that bad to like put the shoe on the other foot for once in a while if we break this down the odds that he is doing that to you are very high because you know from our own experience that is that tends to be how a lot of men will go about things so I mean like once nobody's getting hurt like you've got to get some he's got to get some if it's like a two-way mutual thing you know? I actually cannot believe that there's four, four of you who sent in the literal same secret, okay? I once had sex in a nightclub toilet stall with security standing outside knocking. And then the other girls were saying that they got caught having sex in the club stall, toilet stall. Do you know what? I cannot tell you how many couples or like just girls and fellas i have seen sneaking into toilets whether it be in the club or the pub and you're just looking at them and you're just like i know what you're going to do and, and you think you're being so secretive about it like grabbing her hand like looking around like can't see me can't see me nothing to see here nothing to see here I genuinely i don't care how fucking horny i was i don't care if i hadn't got my hole in six months I don't think I could do the, the toilet stall, the nightclub toilet stall. I, I genuinely don't think I'd be able to get turned on because just thinking of the amount of germs circulating in that stall and the worst thing about them club toilets is that they're so small. Like we've not even got a disabled toilet where we've got loads of room. We're talking like a really small stall. So you're gonna have to be leaning against them walls. I don't wanna know how many people got sick on them. I don't wanna know. I have a boyfriend but I messaged a guy that I had sex with a few years ago and we have been sexting. Absolutely not. I cannot get behind this. And do you want to know why? I've had this done to me before and it genuinely makes you feel like a worthless piece of shit. Like that causes pain man. And do you want to know what it is to me is I feel like that's kind of going on the emotional side of cheating as well as the physical side. So you've got your physical cheating, you've got your emotional cheating, and then you're kind of combining them together, which I feel like is what was happening here because you guys had a past and you're sexting, so you're probably talking about what happened before. And then like, there's obviously some sort of feelings involved there. And I know the thrill of it is probably great and the adrenaline rush and not getting caught and you're here and when he's turning around going to sleep and you're like, eh. But just imagine if the shoe was on the other foot. Imagine if he was doing that to you. One time my boy was going down on me and I was loving it so much. Much, I yelled out mamma mia <laughs> he cringed <laughs> what I find so 
ever want to hear is that she wrote M I A A A A A. So she genuinely went, Mamma Mia. Like she probably. Sometimes when I'm having sex and I'm enjoying it so much, the noises that come out of me genuinely sounds like I'm in pain. Like it sounds like somebody's searing off my right knee. And, and like sometimes it will kind of echo in my head after. I don't know if this happens to anyone else, but like I could make a noise and then it'll just keep repeating on and be like, what the fuck? What the fuck was that? Like I didn't even know I could make that noise. But it just shows like when you're having such a good time during sex and you're like just pure present, um, that's what happens. And I think that's the best kind of sex. Like when shit like that is going to happen, it just shows how comfortable you are. And that's the best kind of sex if you ask me. Okay, oh my god. Met a guy from Dubai at weekend. Fucked him on a canal. It's illegal in Dubai. Do you wanna know? <laughs> this is my friend! Oh my god, I actually can't. I hope she doesn't mind me saying that's my friend, but like nobody's gonna know who it was. But like, I just love the fact that she said, fucked him on a canal. It's illegal in Dubai, babe. That's definitely illegal in <laughs> It's definitely not legal to be fucking on canals over here. He's speaking of Dubai though, Dubai genuinely terrifies me with all the laws in place. Like they're such a strict country. Like I genuinely don't know how anybody goes over there and is able to like be at ease and be comfortable. Like so many Irish people even move over move over there and have I've seen a lot of Irish people move over there in the last couple of years. And I'm just like I, I genuinely don't think I'd be able to relax in the country just because I wouldn't I'd be like Am I doing something wrong? I feel like I'd always be questioning if I was doing something wrong. Like, there's a law that you can't hold hands outside, isn't it? Isn't, like, what? My partner and I mutually masturbate way more than we have sex. I bloody love a good old mutual masturbation session. So, I don't blame you. I honestly, it can be the most sexiest fucking thing you will ever do. Because it's like... Just seeing your partner pleasuring themselves and then they're watching you pleasure yourself and you're like looking at them, looking at you pleasuring themselves and then it's just like the circle and you're like, oh my God, like it's just so hot. If you've never fucking mutually masturbated, I cannot recommend it in all flight. I actually can't. I slept with the guy I told my boyfriend at the time not to worry about two days after we broke up. Two days! Two fucking days! I was just about to say, I feel like we've all been in that position. Like one way or the other like we've either been like had an ex who's gone off with someone they told us not to worry about it's happened to me more than once or you've gone off with someone you told someone not to worry about like I feel like everyone has been on one end of the foot um and do you know what I'm gonna I'll say it once and I, I will stick by it till the day I die that is our gut telling us something if you're worrying about someone, if you're having to ask your partner about someone and they're saying, don't worry about them, and you have that feeling niggling in your tummy, I'd say nine out of 10 times, unless like it's just pure overthinking, anxiety or something like that, nine out of 10 times, you're probably right. And like, if you kind of look around you from like your friends, yourself, from just experiences, like it's always the one that they tell you not to worry about. And why are you worrying about them in the first place? because something inside of you is telling you, you need to watch out. But at the same time, if he was an asshole, if he was a, a dick, then good enough for him. <laughs> That's all I'll say. I used to go on Amigo to masturbate. This was a girl and this really shocked me because I genuinely, I never thought girls would have used Amigo to masturbate. I used to go on Amigo all the time with my friends. Like, do you know when you'd be really young, like, let's go on Amigo, <laughs> let's see some dick. <laughs> oh, oh my God. Like, do you know when you'd be like 13, you're like, ah. Um, I, I like sleepovers and stuff, but to actually masturbate. I know men like Amigo is really popular for men to use for masturbation, but girl girl that is like a dirty little secret that you're gonna keep in your back pocket it's one of those oh my god a girl in school used a glass test tube to get off and it broke while it was still inside her i like who even thinks that's a good idea it's so questionable some of these things like what is that show on tv it's like something come um emergency at the er or some mad show like that and you do have people coming in like get with things that have been stuck up them or just mad stories. But like, why would you look at a glass test tube and go, yeah, gonna have an unreal org orgasm with that. That is really gonna replicate a dick or a dildo. One thing I will say though, is that is gonna be one hell of a killer pussy. I had sex three nights with three different guys. Now the one I do like, we are exclusive. Try before you buy. 
I love this. Do you know what? Okay, and I feel like this is such an unpopular opinion, but like, you know the way you always have people being like, don't have sex on the first day and da 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 or like, don't have sex in like this period of time, whether it's like the first day or like the first six months, like there's all these mad time limits that people kind of throw out there. But I'm kind of like, okay, yeah, I get what you're saying and all, but one, If a fella was interested in you and, you know, it it wouldn't matter if you had sex with him on the first date or the 12th date. That is irrelevant, okay? Second of all, like, my biggest fear would be to, like, literally get into a relationship with somebody and then to realise that the sex is so fucking bad because sex is so important to me in a relationship. Like, I don't, like, people who wait till marriage, like, fair fucking play. I honestly have so much respect for you because... I don't know. I feel like you've got to try before you buy. You've got to try before you commit. Like, you've got to see what you're working with. Like, you've got to see, like, what, what have you got going on here? Like, what, what's the connection? Like, what's the what's the sexual drive like between us? Like, all of this shit is so important. Like, I'm kind of like, you have sex when the fuck if you feel like it. And if, like, you know, he's your person or she's your person or they're your person, like, that's not going to turn them off. Like, I am sorry, I'll tell you that. That is not going to turn them off because also, if you've got some killer pussy, they won't be staying around with that killer pussy baby. (laughs) His dick was too big for the condom. Watched him struggle for 10 minutes. (laughs) Well, that is the world's worst fucking foreplay. I don't think he realises that you can get condoms in multiple sizes. Which is so embarrassing as well that so many of us aren't even aware of that and that just puts so much shame on our sex education. Like something so simple as condoms coming in multiple sizes is something that a lot of people aren't aware of. Thought we had the house for ourselves so we were loud. Turns out my mum was home. I genuinely want to say that is one of the top five situations in your life where you would just wish the ground would open up and swallow you up and then it would just like cover back up. Because I have been in that situation before and there's the walk of shame out of someone's house and then there's the walk of shame down your own stairs and there is no comparison between them two. Oh my god. And also it's like one of those moments that you get so seldom so you're like we've got the house, we've got the house, oh my god let's go, let's go. So like you're doing all these mad moves, you're like making all these mad noises you never do and you're just going for fucking, you're going to town on it. Oh, I can't. Had sex with mother and the two daughters. And on that note, I think we might just end the video today because that genuinely makes me want to get sick in my mouth. Um, But I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope it brought you a bit of a giggle. If you have any secrets, make sure to follow me down on Instagram because I always ask for them over there. But yeah, I cannot wait to see you all in my next video. And I love you all so, 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 so very much. Bye, my friends.